What is up guys, Blackscape here, and today we have some brand new news on Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. This literally just dropped. It is talking about balancing issues on different characters, different game modes, and just exactly what kind of feel Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is going to have with the updates and everything in the future. This is coming from the producers of Dragon Ball Zero. We got this brand new news, so let's go ahead and jump in. But first, if you're brand new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. If you love anything Dragon Ball or are into Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, because that is the news we cover right now on the channel, hit that subscribe button. And for everybody who is part of the Black Squad, you guys are fucking awesome. Let's go ahead and jump in. This information that we got is coming from June Furutani, the producer of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Let's go ahead and start the article. Fans are excited about the new installment in the Dragon Ball franchise. The last game in the Budokai Tenkaichi Sparking in Japan franchise was released in 2007. Players are ready to pick their favorite character and try to go against tough opponents, though for some characters it may be easier said than done. In a recent interview with Gamers Radar with producer Jun Furutani, it was hinted that the characters will not be as balanced as most modern fighting games. While some players may be disappointed, especially with the success of Fighters, a more esports friendly game, this may be one of the best things for the game to succeed. And this is kind of what I was talking about in my previous Sparking Zero video, if the characters are going to get boosts when they transform, and if the god characters are going to get any sort of unbalanced edge in their playstyle. Previously, Budokai Tenkaichi games had characters that were stronger than others. Giant characters such as Broly and the Great Apes would have super armor, whereas most characters wouldn't be able to make them flinch with one punch. A beam attack may do more damage to one character than another, and Hercule or Mr. Satan wouldn't be able to make any character flinch. Plenty of longtime players of the series are expecting something like this since the game's announcement. They find the balance fun and challenging when they go against far stronger opponents, which is true. It would feel off if things were to change drastically and would probably drive them away. Imagine if Yamcha walked towards Beerus, challenged him to a fight, and was able to win fair and square. That wouldn't make sense in the canon of DBZ's franchise. What would most likely happen would be Beerus wouldn't even notice Yamcha swinging his arms in the air, instantly knocking the human man out. The first scenario is completely possible in a game such as Fighters, with the context of the manga and anime, the latter would happen. Many fans see the Budokai Tenkaichi series as a big DBZ simulator where they can destroy their surroundings with one giant beam clash. A good part of the fan base calls themselves Power Scalers, a group that loves to discuss how strong a character is. I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of fun to do. Many dedicated Power Scalers would find the earlier scenario as blasphemous. A lot of players may not be in the hardcore fighting game scene. They may just be anime fans who want to pick Goku go straight to Ultra Instinct and decimate their opponents in a matter of seconds. And if that's what the players want to do, then why shouldn't they? Some characters use special moves that can give them an edge with knowledge from the canon. For example, Devil Man from the original Dragon Ball, he has a move called the Devil Might Beam that does different damage depending on whom the opponent is. In canon, it takes the opponent negative thoughts or how evil they are and uses them against them. For characters who are good, it won't do much at all. For evil characters, it can take away as much as half of their health, which is honestly really interesting that they even went into some of these attacks and how they affect certain characters, especially something like this that is significantly stronger against the evildoers in the game. I'm wondering how they would affect somebody like Vegeta who flip-flops and Piccolo who flip-flops. Maybe different eras of different characters would be affected in different ways. That's how in-depth they're going in this game. When it comes to friends playing against each other, the player who wins against the weaker character has every right to gloat to their friend, especially if the odds are far stacked against them. While it is an uphill battle, smart players can defeat any challenge that may come their way. Players will get a greater sense of satisfaction when they win and an almost impossible challenge, which is true. People love an underdog story. Who's a better underdog than the player who has to go up against someone who chooses a literal god? Players love a challenge, and there is certainly a group who would choose to take it. Some may take the time to learn every single detail about their character. Those players will be the ones to be wary against. Once they set their minds on it, they will 
be almost impossible to stop. In the same Gamer Radar interview, Furutani stated that Sparking Zero is definitely not an esports game like Fighters. That may make some fans upset if they want to see this game played in big events like EVO. While that may still happen, history has shown that this is not very likely to happen. Sparking Zero is a 3D arena fighter. While they are popular, none of them have ever been to the prestigious tournament. Most 3D arena fighters are known to have unbalanced characters with unfair abilities. 110% even the Storm games are unbalanced. A lot of players who frequent tournaments look down upon arena fighters for this specific reason. That's not to say that, arena, that there aren't any tournaments. A local group may hold a tournament for these games here and there, but nothing big. There are fans that would love to see this game join in the mainstream, though it seems like it's not going to happen. It's not all doom and gloom for players who want some kind of balance to the game. In the interview, Furutani said that they have implemented something that he calls a system of cost. From what it seems, each character has their own cost. If there is a limit set, players can only choose up to that cost. In the example Furutani mentioned, he set the limit to 30. Players can choose up to 5 characters to play as. Players will have to pick and choose the characters so they won't go over the limit. While one player may be able to choose 5 characters to play, their opponent may only be able to choose one or two. While the latter may have the advantage of strength, the former will have the advantage of numbers. A smart player can use their character strength well enough to be able to win. Absolutely, this is the way that you do it. You make it so people, again, just like they said, you, they have to choose how much, how many characters they can put up on the field. If you have a Gogeta that's facing off against the entire original Dragon Ball Z Saiyan Saga Z Squad, then yeah, he may be able to defeat two or three of them. Will he be able to defeat the fourth one, the fifth one, depending if it's a good player? That is a great system to set up where you basically are, uh, if you are going to be choosing some of these bigger than life characters like Broly and uh, Jiren and stuff, those characters will cost you an arm and a leg to be able to put on the field, but you will have basically a juggernaut. Even if the game isn't big enough to make it to the events like EVO, that doesn't mean dedicated fans will meet up and set up their own private tournaments. When a community gets big enough, they will set their own rules for other players to make the game as balanced as it can be. They can go from one playing with certain rules set to simply outright banning certain players. That is what happened with the Super Smash Bros. community before the series became as big as it currently is. A smaller community met up at local events, set up rules that are new, common now, that are now commonplace. For example, having three stocks with six to eight minutes matches, those rules took time and many failed attempts with other tournaments to set up the same rules. In the age of the modern internet, there should be no issue in setting up these kinds of tournaments. In Sparking Zero becomes a big hit, if Sparking Zero becomes a big hit, these kinds of meetups and rules will likely be commonplace similar to multiverses. Multiverses is kind of is kind of running through the same problem right now where it's harder to figure out which characters are balanced and to set up tournaments like that is very difficult. In the end, Sparking Zero is a game meant to be fun. While some people may want the next fighters, not everyone can follow the deep mechanics. Some players don't want to take the time to learn how to move cancel and snap back. Most general audiences would just like to pick their favorite character and mindlessly blast away the competition. Agreed. There's nothing wrong with wanting to take a game seriously and by the world's best player. However, nobody should be looked down upon for wanting their big muscular character who can destroy the earth with a single blast to be defeated by a child. Every gamer should be able to have fun with the game they spend money on however they want. Sparking Zero seems to be the biggest game in the franchise yet, with more characters being shown off with each new trailer. There doesn't seem to be an end to the possibilities of matchup games will have to or will have when the game releases. Someone's dream of beating Jiren with the team of Mr. Satan and Yamcha will very well come to fruition. Great system. I'm glad they're doing it. I love the fact that they are not copying fighters. Fighters is very successful, but they aren't copying it because fighters is not a game 
that can basically be mindlessly played. You really have to know what you're doing with certain characters, and it takes a long time to master or even get good at certain characters. So a game like this where it's more casual, more fun, more goofy, and more for everybody is going to be something that's going to be a lot more entertaining. And I was actually worried how they were going to balance Krillin and all those other characters that are smaller. But again, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. This is Blackscape signing off. Take care, guys. Subscribe for more content. Oh,